Now, there are a lot of things happening in Muslim societies that we don't understand. And we don't understand because we don't follow the news other than the brief headlines that come our way. So I'm going to give you an opportunity, give us an opportunity to look at a particular case. This woman, Farkunda, was her name. And in Afghanistan, a lot of, peop a lot of people only go by one name. Farkunda was her name. It means jubilation. I think in Dari, it means jubilation. So here's what happened. There was this illiterate scamster, shyster, as there are all over the world. You know how we have them here, like in Christian society? You got all these people who are going to tell you all about Jesus and stuff, and then as soon as they tell you and they suck you in, they're like, hey, I need some money. Give me some money. I'm going to preach, but give me some money. You know, like, what's his name? Creflo Dollar. He preaches, and God told me that I need a brand new $36 million airplane. So all my followers need to get a $36 million airplane. And people are crazy enough that they just start sending him money. And I'm like, okay, well, if you can convince someone to give you money to buy a new jet, more power to you. Even if you use the name of, uh, the holy name of Christ. It's like, that's what it is. That's what it is. But Christians do it. Everybody does it. You, you Kabul. And this guy was illiterate. He couldn't read. And he would hand out these little pieces of paper. And the little pieces of paper had verses on them. And he would say what the verses were. And they were prayers. They were verses from the, whole, the Holy Quran. And they were prayers. And he would give them to people and people would give him money. And people thought that he was some sort of special person. But he, he was illiterate, completely uneducated and illiterate. And he didn't know the Quran. And the verses he was handing out weren't Quranic verses. They were just words. And this woman, Fakunda, and she actually studied the Quran, Fakunda, and she came across him in Kabul, and he was a regular kind of guy who was there. And she took it and she started speaking out against him and denouncing him. And saying, this isn't the Quran, my brothers and sisters. This guy is a shyster. He's stealing your money. So the guy, what he did, he called, started calling out that this woman right here burned the Quran. She burned the Quran. He watched her burn the Quran. And he whooped the crowd into a frenzy about this woman having burned the Quran. And the crowd came together and they killed her. They killed her. And I want to, I want to, I really, partly I want to show you that, I don't, I want to show you the video and I, let me, let me show you the video, however, let me do it in the following sense. It's really, 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 really disturbing. You will never see a video. Oh, I don't have to show you the video. I'm not going to show it to you. What's that? Okay. All right, listen. Can you, I'm just going to show part of it, okay? Go ahead.
So you watch, you watch that and you think, you can't, if you don't know Muslims, if you never met a Muslim, if you never met an Afghan, if you never engaged an Afghan, you can watch that video and be absolutely horrified and have no idea how to put it into context. I, as it turns out, and now by extension you all, as it turns out, I happen to have a partner who is Afghan. And this is this partner on this NATO grant that we work on. My partner, his name is Rafi. He is the manager of the Independent Bar Association in Afghanistan, the only independent legal structure in Afghanistan. His job is to take, is to create a system, Western system of law in Afghanistan. Rafi, my partner, is bringing Afghanistan into the modern world of law. Most Afghans are illiterate. Most of the stories that you hear are from rural areas with people who are highly illiterate, with people who are interpreting the Quran, having never ever read the Quran. They can't read. They have no idea what it says. Most of the struggles, the stories that you hear, and I learned this from Rafi and my other partners and people I work with in other countries like Pakistan and so on, that most of the stories you are coming from people who are doing really horrific things that know nothing about this. Nothing at all. Illiterate. So here's what Rafi says. Well, first off, did you see the guy that said Ministry of Justice, that guy, and he said, well, you know, if she really was burning the Quran, then the people would be justified in killing her. You know what happened to her? What to that guy? First off, you know who he was? A nobody. A nobody. He's a nobody. They put the title there because he has this really low-level job in the ministry, and he's the only one that they could talk to, and he made that statement. And you know what happened to him? When he made that statement, he got fired. He almost went to prison, but he got fired because the Afghan government said, you can't, you're not having that idea. That's not Afghanistan. That's not Afghanistan. That's not where we're going. You know what happened to the men who committed the crimes? Here, let me give you the rundown of people who committed the crimes. Four of them got the death penalty. Immediately, death penalty. They were tried. Rafi, my partner, actually was the defense attorney. He argued, and this is how Afghanistan has moved into the 20th or 21st century, is that Rafi was part of the team that actually gave all of these men who killed her legal counsel, just like in the United States. Everybody has access to a lawyer. So these, all of these men had access to lawyers and Rafi's job was to provide the lawyers for them. Four of them got the death penalty. Three of them got 20 year sentences. Eight of them got 16 years in jail. They didn't, they weren't even committing the actual crime. They got 16 years in jail. Three of them got three years. There were 11 police officers and soldiers that were in the vicinity when this happened and they didn't step in. They lost their jobs and they got between one and four years in jail. There were other people that went to prison as a result of this. People that, many people who had spoken out about it in the government and outside the government lost their jobs. This is, we see the despicable act. The despicable act is on the news. We have no idea how Muslims are responding. Here in the United States, we hear again and again, why aren't Muslims speaking out about this? Why aren't they saying anything? Why aren't they doing anything? What's going on with those people? What's wrong with those people? How horrific that could be. I can't imagine. They must be bestial or something. They're doing lots of things. Speaking out constantly. Yeah, that's a horrible act. Who are the people? Every one of them. Every one of them was uneducated. As I recall Rafi saying, every single one of the men who did that was illiterate. They just got brought into this crazy moment. Well, I could show you a video of, Amer of people in the United States beating the shit out of somebody else in the United States. It's not the same. And how different is it? 
It's not the same, a crowd of people attacking another crowd of people. Oh, but they're not doing it based on Quranic teaching. Well, these people really weren't either. They were doing it because they got whipped into some kind of frenzy and they killed. So, I'm trying, is he there? You got him? Oh, that dirty dog. All right. I'm trying to get Rafi on the phone, but he's sleeping. He promised me he'd be awake. All right. We'll bring, we'll bring him in next class. Yeah, man. Okay. That's all right. You, you're calling on Skype too? Both, yeah. Yeah, okay. He'll call back. You watch. He's gonna, he'll join us shortly. I know he's going to wake up and he's going to feel some kind of way. Next, go to the next slide. It's like three in the morning. Go to the next slide. <laughs> Whatever. He's been here. He's spoken in class a couple times. This is Rafi with his daughter. Now, Rafi receives death threats on a regular basis from, from the Taliban because of his work with human rights and with women's rights. But they're moving forward. They're moving forward. Things are changing. Good things are happening. But we don't know what we don't know. We just hear stories. Okay. And stories are often just part of the issue. Isn't she cute, by the way? Yeah, he's not, but she is. <laughs> so. so let's talk. Wait, you got him? Or no? Okay. Let's talk about Christian Sharia. Because you see, I think that this stuff exists on a slippery slope. And I think if we lined up all of the sins, if we got, if we got us all to agree miraculously and we won, but if we just, even I took two Christians out of here and I said, well, let's line up the sins from like the worst sins down to the tiny little sins down there. Somewhere along the line, you got to sort of start to draw a line between like what's like, okay, but that's really inappropriate. Like for example, you steal a little bit of money and then you get shunned by somebody. I don't know. You get kicked out of school. I mean, that's your punishment. I don't know. It's a, as opposed to, well, you burn a, a holy text and someone thinks, well, you should be killed. Okay, now that's like way, way, way down here. So how do you, how do you define what really is sinful and what's not sinful. You see, this is the problem. This is, of course, the problem with using a book like this and trying to establish the system of law on that. How do you do that? How do you use it? And see, what Rafi was going to talk about was actually the, the beauty... Can we actually go... We, I think we have to go back. Yeah. What Rafi was going to talk about... Wait, look, let me just say the following. A couple years ago, he and I were sitting in my office and we were talking about sh Sharia, Islamic Sharia. And Rafi was telling me what, he's, what they're doing in Afghanistan and how they're establishing their system of law based on this book, the Holy Quran. And I said to myself, my God, that's beautiful. I wish we had that in the U.S., <laughs> right? And then I called Lori in. I said, hang on, Lori. Check this out. And I just told her about the system. Just like, I just laid it out. I didn't say what we were talking about. And, I, and Lori said, God, that sounds really cool. And I thought, how do you get there? How do you get to what we think? How do you get to killing people because they burned this book, or you thought they burned the book, to Sam Richards? who despises pretty much anything that's like fundamentalist and jammed down my throat to say like, wow, that sounds like a really cool thing. That sounds really cool. And here's basically what he said. Equality for everybody. The Quran says equality for everybody. 
women, children, poor people, disabled people, gay people, everybody. It's equality for everybody. That is the foundation everywhere and anywhere. So I started throwing examples out to him. Well, what about this? What about that? Well, no, that wouldn't be acceptable. It's equality. It's equality. You can't harm another human being except in self-defense. Unless you're defending yourself. I'm like, really? So you couldn't get, well, what do you mean defending yourself? What if you're like, you need, you think that you, your society needs oil. So you have to go out and attack your neighbor because you need that oil. He'd be like, no, that's not acceptable. It's like, well, that's pretty cool. Women's are 100% equal to men. 100% equal to men. According to the law that Afghanistan is now writing. And I'm thinking, we don't even have that in the United States. There are things happening in the United States that would be illegal in Afghanistan. And I think, oh, okay, that's pretty intense. One thing after another. Caring for the poor. You have to care for the poor. You have an obligation to care for the poor. What are we doing here with the poor? What are, how are we treating the poor? And I'm thinking, they're not doing it. They're a poor country. They're not there yet. But that's what's built into their legal system based on this. And I think, that's pretty cool. I'm not, I, you know, I, I tend to lean toward libertarianism. So I tend to be like really kind of free of government, let people make their own decisions. I tend to not like things like this that hang over my head and then tell me how I have to act. But that's actually pretty cool. I think, all right. So he's going, to, we're going down the list of all the new laws that they're writing and how they're based on this. And I'm thinking, all right, that's actually a pretty, I like that system. So I'm thinking, that's Sharia law? And he's like, yeah, Sam, that's Sharia law. For us, that's Sharia law. Well, what about all these crazy people in Afghanistan, like who are burning people and killing people and so on? He's like, those are just, that's arguments that people have. That's like all sorts of bad things that people are doing. And then what they're doing is justifying those things based on whatever it is, whatever thing they can pick out of here. So some illiterate tribal leader becomes like the person who decides what the legal codes are out in some mountainous region of Afghanistan. And, and at least one of you know, in this classroom know that those regions. And so somebody out there and they just make the decisions, but they can't even read this thing. So they just decide whatever. Yeah, my family, my friend over here, he wants that plot of land over there. And so therefore the Quran says, you can't have that plot of land because X, Y, or Z. And just make some bullshit up. And like, okay, that's what's happening all the time. Okay? So like, all right, I, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't justify it. It's just understanding it. Let's go. Okay.